talk a little bit about notes in general. There are different types of notes that we take and why we take notes. Uh, each one of us comes to a note application with different use cases in mind and different expectations and requirements. So I do a I do a breakdown of different types of notes that we, you know, people may want to capture with uh, using one of these apps. Um, I highlight some useful features that are somewhat common across some of these apps. Some have them, some don't. Um, I compare Evernote, OneNote, Simple Note, and Obsidian. I think I've got another one in there, Workflowy. Um, and then I go into pros and cons uh, of from my experience of Evernote, OneNote, and Obsidian. And then because I've been using Obsidian a lot lately, I, I deep dive into that to show some of the extra uh, DIY-like features and power of Obsidian. And DIY is do-it-yourself, and there's a, bit of, uh, there's a bit of learning curve that's necessary to take advantage of some of these features. So it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be for everyone's needs or style or taste, but I thought I'd give an example of what it can do. So to John's point, like, who am I? Well, I am, I don't have a bio on a slide on here. Uh, I've been uh, in the software industry since I took Apple soft basic programming in high school back in 1980. Um, and I've been writing programs and uh, for the last 20 to 30 years been managing and leading differently sized software development teams, um, small startups, large 180 person organizations. Um, I worked at AOL for 10 years on the browser development team and on AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, went to different startups for music uh, sharing uh, at a college campus. I worked at Nokia managing their um, browser development organization. Uh, for the last four or five years, I've been an independent consultant working with companies to help uh, as an interim VP of engineering, running their engineering QA and DevOps organizations, and also introducing and, and transforming their, their product lifecycle to be more agile, like introducing best practices, processes, training, recruiting, basically anything that goes into software product development from prioritization, road mapping, epics, stories, users, uh, user design, development, testing, releasing, monitoring, maintenance, uh, everything along the way I have uh, experience in and, and I've been helping companies do that. So I'm uh, just wrapping up a gig. I've been uh, working with a company in South Florida for the last year and a half. So if anybody knows of anyone who needs that kind of help, I am currently in, on the market. So back to me and note taking. Briefly, I've been using, I've tried using everything under the sun for the last 30 years. I started with a steno pad. I used Emacs outline mode when I discovered outlines were awesome. And then I moved to a two dimensional outline mode, which is called a mind map. Uh, and then I moved into Evernote, which allowed me to sync across devices. I've used Airtable a lot lately and Obsidian for the last three to four months. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, so to dive into the meat of the, the discussion, broad category of notes, what type of notes are we talking about? Um, there's, a, there's the basic simple note, which is just unstructured text. It's ad hoc, it's short term, it's brief. It could be a letter that you wanna just copy, you know, start, you know, start an email in a note app like text edit or notepad you want to just start writing it and getting your thoughts down and then copy it over into email uh, or it's a quick to-do list for the day and it, it doesn't need to last beyond the, the, the scope of the day um, the next type of note you want to take you might want to take is a structured text I, i'm calling i made up all these terms so uh, i i didn't do a lot of searching to see if there are more official uh, terms for this but structure test is just simple text plus outlines, checklists, hierarchical, short to medium term in terms of your, their use and the scope. So something a little bit more permanent than just a notepad file in a directory called temp. Um, you wanna have some bullet points, you wanna have tabbing, you wanna have checklists that you could like cross things off of, um, to-do lists, stuff like that. 
Um, the next level up is rich text, and that's structured test plus lists, pictures, bold, italic, underline, tables. You may use it for daily notes, journaling. Uh, take you know, take advantage of daily notes. Therefore, you need to have some other system, other way of managing all the different files, whether it's files on your computer, uh, documents in the cloud, Google Docs, uh, or um, you know, OneDrive with the uh, Outlook. Um, Microsoft and uh, or on the server and a system like Evernote and OneNote. Uh, then you move up to uh, content. And this is where you, you the note becomes not so much just like a to do list or, uh, you know, a, a short letter or a, a template of a letter or something like that. It becomes content you may want to publish. You want to have a table of contents. You want to have fancier tables. You want to have, uh, you know, more complex tables to create. And you want to be able to have an easy, published, ready way of doing it. So you want to be able to say, here's my collection of files. There's links across them. There's table of contents. And I have a formatting. I have, I can choose the color scheme. I can use the theme. And I want to just publish that out to the web. And, um, there's a lot of tools out there that do that. Some focus just on technical documentation. There's one called DocuSaurus that uses Markdown, and I'll get into Markdown in a bit. And you create your document, your technical documentation in, in this tool, and then you publish it to a website. And the website can actually be uh, hosted on Git, and you can expose your Git repository through a uh, web service that displays these as web pages. Uh, and then the last category I came up with is, is what's called a second brain. This is a, an area of, of use cases I wasn't aware of until I discovered Obsidian. Um, and there's other tools like that called Roam and uh, another one as well, uh, Roam, R-O-A-M. And that's where you really, it's content plus really super enriched content. It's like, it's got full text search. You have multiple files, it manages your files, what they call a vault for you. You have easy cross-referencing, easy linking across the different notes, the different files. You have backlinks, you have tagging that goes across the entire collection of files. You have added functionality with plugins. You have a graph view that shows you how all your notes are interlinked. People start developing whole frameworks on top of how to organize your files. So basically you capture bits of data and facts and information, and then synthesize that through these graphs and whatever into knowledge bases. And um, they have, people have, po have me, published- Can I ask a, maybe an overly simplistic question? Yeah. yeah. You seem to be willing to learn a large number of different systems because I guess you do it professionally. But many of us who are retired would be perfectly happy to have one something. And yeah. if it gives us more than we need, well, that's probably okay because someday one might use it. But I'm not interested personally in learning five or six different systems. So by the time you're done with your talk, I'm hoping that you might give some indication for people like me, if they want to learn one, what should they do? Yeah, I, I, I dive in, I give examples. I use Evernote, OneNote and Obsidian as my go-tos and I demonstrate them. I show you examples to features, pros and cons for those. I'll let you choose, right? My guess is, as John, like you said, you're not interested in the second brain or even the content. But you probably will. So Evernote or OneNote will probably be the best for you. And then the choice between those two may come down to the fact that you already have a, an Office 365 subscription and it comes with that for free. And it, it, comes you know, like, it. it comes with it. You have mm -hmm. it available, I, I believe. I think it's, it's, it's part of the package. And so you just may go, let me just start using that. OneNote comes with the package. Oh, I um, see. Okay. Also, <laughs> also, you don't need to get the package to get OneNote. That's good to know. I didn't. I didn't realize that. I knew it. It came with the package that I get at my client. I, I'm. Yeah. I'm proof of that. Okay. So. <laughs> so the other useful features that other people might be interested in knowing about that are available in some of these 
Um, like Evernote has a web clipper, a browser extension that captures content from the web. So if you're capturing information and data from the web while you're doing research, easy way of doing that is to bring that into your note app. Uh, like Evernote has that. I didn't do any research on OneNote. I don't know. Um, publishing content to a website or PDF document. Uh, plugins for extra functionality. I'll get into that later. Freehand drawing. If I want to just scribble on a note on top of it and, and, and use that. Um, background images to represent lined paper or graph paper. Uh, OneNote has that. I didn't see that in any others. Uh, embedding files into the note, like a PDF, and have it have it display and render right there as part of the part of the note and other file types. Most of those have most of them have that. Uh, linking across notes, so you can have a quick hyperlink over to another note that's related. Um, organizing notes, themes, search, and also the idea of it's is it is it platform decoupled? Evernote stores their content on their service. You can export it to a local file and import it into another tool, but you don't have you don't have access to those files. Others only use local files. So, how do Evernote, OneNote, Simple Note, and Notepad kind of rank? Uh, I put Evernote and OneNote as N three. You know, they're at the rich text level. Um, uh, Evernote has the Web Clipper, uh, good no note organization, search linking. Uh, OneNote has drawing and background images. They have tables, but it's 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 weird. It's buggy, I, I'd say. And their checklist support is poor. It's not you can you can do it. You can use it. It's just not as easy as other apps uh, allow you to do it. Simple note. I, somebody mentioned simple note and I looked at it. It's really like notepad. It's really like notepad. It's it's not even or it's, yeah it's like Notepad it, it doesn't have rich text I I go into that in a bit and then Obsidian so here are some screenshots I use three examples outline a simple outline with bullet points so I'll just show you so here's what it looks like in Evernote if you this is what Evernote looks like so you can organize your notes into groups what they call notebooks on the left uh, you can have them be hierarchical and it's just like one level down is basically it. There are two or three level, three levels of organization um, is all they support. For the most part, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't need to get any more complicated than that with uh, with what you can do with Evernote. Um, they have easy checklisting, they have outlines, they have bullet points, they have rich text, um, and you can organize, you can tag things uh, to make it easier to search for things later. Um, Evernote, you can also, it moves into the content category by having good table support. You can create, I created this table very easily in, in Evernote. You can set the background color of each cell. You can have rich text within each cell of the table. You can, uh, you can rearrange the table. Uh, if you need to move a column over to the left or the right, it's pretty easy to do that. And you can embed and copy and paste in images directly into the note. And you can resize the image very well, uh, very easily within Evernote. That was a feature they added. When they added that feature, it made, made my use of Evernote a lot, lot easier. And you can see, you can check off the checklist items. So you can keep track of what you have done and what you haven't done. But note that the uh, to-dos, well, maybe someone else can answer this. Uh, the the to-dos that you have, the checklist you have in each note, there's no way to look, pull all of those into one view to see all of your to-dos. You have to kind of go into the note to see what your checklist to-dos are. Uh, and if that's incorrect with Evernote, uh, I'd be happy to let someone correct me on that. One note. OneNote has similar organization. Uh, it, you have a you have what's called a notebook. That's a different. That's that opens up, uh, and you, you you it's it's basically there. You you see it, and then you have the different sections. Uh, you have so you have three levels of organization. You have a notebook, and then you have sections, and then for each section you have notes. And they have checklists. They're just a little 
clunky because they put their checklist in with other feature that they have of like tagging uh, a line. So it's not a separate checklist item, which I think is something they've missed. They can they can strengthen that feature a bit. If you see here down down in the middle of this uh, SWOT note, I have a couple of stars in front of some lines. And those stars are another example. It's like the same feature as the checklist. So I found that if I accidentally starred a checklist line and I wanted to remove the star, I had to basically remove all of it. I could, it was hard to just remove each one. And that's, that's, just, that's just minor, that's, that's probably a minor UX issue that I, I, I take issue with because I do this for a living. Um, here's an example in one note where you can do free I've, hand drawing. I've got a quick question here. Yeah. Yeah. What of these note systems is so uh, importantly significant that it's worth learning about uh, that you couldn't use existing kinds of things like taking notes in, let's say, Word or taking notes in PowerPoint like I do a lot of times? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, what, what do you gain from this, this uh, learning a whole new system uh, that, that uh, you know, gives you such a profound advantage that, that it's worth learning? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, for me, I mean, it, it all depends on your style, what, you're, what, you are, what you need out of your note taking, right? If, if what you need to do is if, if you're, using Word and you create a Word doc or a Google doc or whatever, and you're just using it as a dumping ground for information and you're doing the organization in your head mostly, and you just, you don't, you don't need to have a lot of support by the tool doing cross-referencing, uh, cross-linking, searching for tracking to-dos. If you don't have a need for that, then you can continue using Word. There's nothing wrong with using Word. You know, my wife uses Google Docs for everything. And whenever she and I collaborate on something, you know, I have to just say, yeah, we're going to be using Google Doc. And I, I, I'll have to keep my own notes and research in a separate, in my own area. Um, so there's nothing wrong with using Word for this, right? What these tools allow you to do is you can do searches across, you can pull them together into a, a more organized uh, way. You can group similar notes on similar topics together under the same section or in the same notebook. Uh, you can have, you know, uh, it's, it's easier to type in here, I think, and to create a note because you're in note-taking mode. You don't have to go to um, OneDrive or your local file system and find the file that you've got. Now, if you've got a file system, a directory structure that's very organized, like a, tox a taxonomy of, you know, subject and you break it down and you have all this, this system in place, that's, that's, a, that's the equivalent of what you can do with these note apps, provide some organization to your notes. But if you already have that and you're using Word and it's all local, there's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong with using that as long as you you are ha perfectly happy and efficient with using that system, right? But if you find yourself going, where did I leave? Where did I put that note? Where did where did that information go? What 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 do I have to do next on this project? Where does this? How does this relate? And oh, I have to copy this out and share it with other people in an email. Where did that? If you find yourself doing that a lot, if you find yourself spending a lot more time finding something in your note system, files or whatever, then actually being productive with the note, creating, sharing, publishing, whatever, then you might want to consider switching to an app like Evernote or OneNote to try it and see if it makes it more efficient for you to get used to your notes. It's a long-winded answer. I hope that helps. Yeah, one of the things that, let me just chime in real quick. One of the things that I love about using Evernote and OneNote to a smaller degree is the information retrieval feature, is sorting the information by categories and topics 
and then being able to um, a month later, six months later, go back and use um, search and search operators to pull that information back out again. Okay, so let me move on. Um, so one note, you can do tables, images, files embedded, um, has the freehand drawing. Uh, simple note, I'll just cover it briefly. It doesn't have any rich test, text, no bullet points. You can see the bullet points are actually asterisk, asterisks. So no embedded images, no tables, not much better than text edit or notepad in plain text mode. So I'm not gonna talk about it much anymore. Um, again, it's, I, I consider it'd be like, a, it'd be like a checklist thing, a to-do list for the day or for maybe a week, but nothing more complicated than that. Uh, Obsidian, uh, similar view, right? It has rich text, checklist, bullet points. The file format is in Markdown, right? So I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, tables and images. This has all the same features. Um, the tables are kind of very, they're, they're the weak point of Obsidian because Markdown itself has poor table support. Um, I'm just going to blast through these because I've already got them. So pros and cons. For me, I had used Evernote for years. And so I, well, it's got great table support. It's good sharing, collaboration with others. You can say, you can start a whatever. You can start notes for a documentation or a reference architecture or paper or whatever. And you can share it with other people through Evernote and they get access to it and they can write it and they can edit it and you can revoke their access once you're done. Um, you can sync to one other device for free. You can have an Evernote app on your phone. And so therefore when you, you, when you need access to a note or information that you've stored in Evernote, you can get access to it through an app on your phone. Makes it easier to search for that information. Yes, you can bring up OneDrive or Google Drive on your phone and navigate and open it up into a Google Doc or my, you know mobile Word Doc uh, app. It's just heavier weight. It takes a lot longer to do that than if it's just within the app, like Evernote itself. Um, one of my frustrations over the years with Evernote and what really prompted me this year to start looking for a replacement was th this example I have here. Uh, if you if you try to manipulate the, the 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 bullet points too much or the numbering lists too much, you can end up with something like this very easily, and then it can take many minutes to re redo all of that because it's it really doesn't allow you to. It, it's really difficult to just undo and change in place. I basically ended up having to retype a lot of what I had just typed clean because it, it got screwed up. And and this is this is a screenshot from Evernote. It didn't take me long to recreate this. Uh, copy and paste into other apps can often mangle the text. It became a really problem when sharing a lot of stuff with email. I'd have to almost rewrite and reformat the stuff again, making it you know wide, making it difficult to justify the, the use of it. Uh, it's hard to link to other notes. Um, you can do it, but it's just not as easy as I found with other tools. Uh, files are stored on their servers, no extensibility. The features seem to have stagnated a bit and limited levels of organizing notes. But again, that's my experience. Other people obviously still use Evernote and love it. And yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. I, I really liked it for years um, until I found something else. One note, um, it's, it's free with Outlook, Office. I guess with other, uh, even without that. It's got a nice drawing layer. It's got background images. If you see down here, the screenshot, you can put in a graph paper background. Uh, it's got good math support, uh, mathematical symbols. You can, you can create a mathematical equation so very easily on there. Um, it has poor table management. Um, this is literally what I tried. I created a sample table and I tried to copy a column and move it, move it over. And when I did the paste, it put it inside the first cell of that column that was already there. And it's like, well, that's not quite what I meant. <laughs> I didn't want that. And I couldn't figure out how to 
not do that. And so it's kind of cool. You can bet a table within a cell, but I didn't understand why you want to do that too much. So, um, but again, it's free. It's, it supports the simple use cases very well. Uh, that's just a picky, a minor nit on my point, my part. Um, Obsidian, uh, it's free, open source. Um, it, it has a very dynamic community support. There's a Discord server you can join. A lot of people participating where you can ask questions. A lot of open source projects associated with Obsidian. Um, the markdown files are stored locally. I sync mine to GitHub, which is supported from within the app. Uh, I use GitHub for the syncing and it has strong hyperlinking across the different notes and different search and organization tools. Um, the tables are a weak point. Does not have great table support. Um, they have some tools and plugins to help make that easier. Uh, it's still not there yet, I'd say. Uh, but, and the advanced uses are somewhat DIY, do it yourself. The screenshots I have here are from two example vaults that I downloaded from somebody else's, you know, GitHub. Uh, this one at the top, the MOC is maps of content. It's a, it's an attempt to, you know, it's a way to organize and pull together different con, you know, different facts and information into a, into a map, into a, into a hub of information. And then the hub graphically displayed as a graph. So you can see, over, no, sorry, you can see over here, habits MOC is linking to a lot of different, different notes that are related to this one idea or concept. So this is in that second brain category of use of Obsidian. Um, I've got like really probably boring slides about Obsidian. So um, I don't think, unless, unless anybody else wants to see more detailed examples, more complicated examples of Obsidian, I, I suggest I stop here. Um, because it seems that that that's not really what this uh, what the what this group wants to see. Jerry, can I ask you a question on this? Yeah, sure. Uh, are you using this for project management? Obsidian. Yeah. Uh, yes, as one use case. I have. I'm, I mean, trying to, one... I'm trying to think of an example because I, I do that. I do, I do that. Uh, project management, where okay. where you have well, a you... million different things flying all around. Yeah, yeah. And you 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 prompted me to go into here. I've got a whole slide on project management. Okay. Here we are. So yeah, this is this is within Obsidian. So what I what I found, I you know, I so you have there's a plugin you can get. Somebody wrote this. It's easy to search for and install and set up really. Is it's a Kanban board. If you are you familiar with Kanban boards? If not, it's basically a column-based way to organize your to-dos, your tasks. So you can you can configure, you say which columns you want. I have to do in progress done here. And I create a new Kanban board for each project. And so when I go into that project, when I want to work on that project, I have a workspace set up that has some preset open files, files to open within that workspace for that project. So I'll say, hey, I want to I want to go into my note survey. My well, I had one for crypto when I gave the crypto talk. I'm like, I want to go focus on crypto for now. So I'd go to my crypto workspace and I'd have I have a Kanban board that's open and then a file open capturing my main outline of the talk plus my reference document. So those were always open when I went to my workspace for crypto. And then I could it? like, yeah. Mm, Go ahead. Well, does this then permit you to uh, figure out you got a million things flying around? And you're trying mm -hmm. to keep a status report on each one of them. There's mm -hmm. no way you can remember them. Does this lend itself to that? It does. I yeah. mean, so 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 for for me, like the Kanban board works great just for like uh, within the scope of a project, right? Um, this system over here on the right, the, again, this is a, a framework that someone set up. It has ways to, can you see, can you see the text in there? I, might, yeah, I know yeah. it might be small. So you have, these are dashboards set up. So this, this shows you the list of projects that are going on right now. 
And then each project has a list of tasks. And then the projects themselves align, you could set the alignment to certain goals and values that you might have for the company or your organization. And you can say, well, this project supports this value or this goal or KPI, if you're at the corporate world, you know, a key performance indicator, this project helps us meet those. And then you can like click and click and link and get all those kind of see them together. And then you can track the progress, you know, uh, end date and completion progress, all these, all these stats and stuff you can do within Obsidian, within, within the framework. I need, you a can even, I need a framework for unmet goals. That's what I need. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there, we, there you go. You can do that too, because you have, uh, I don't think I have it here, but here's the, I can't see it clearly myself. You have some, you have some, you can click on, there's a view that says, you know, uh, overdue tasks, huh. you know, things that, that were due yesterday or last week. Right, and then you right, can right. like focus on those. Uh, I will go back to one example I have here. Like you see here, this Gantt chart. Um, yeah. Does so, that make a Gantt chart itself? You can, you can, so what you can, so it's one of the extensions. Mermaid is an online tool for creating diagrams of different types. You see over here, go to mermaid.live and you can create a flow chart, class diagram, pie chart, Gantt chart, user journey, get, you can create a lot of different diagrams there just by typing in text to describe it. The tool itself will create the chart. And oh. what I've done, what, what, Obsidian allows me to do is I can copy, I can go over to mermaid.live, I can create what I want, and I can then go to Obsidian and I can put the text in here and it appears in my document in Obsidian. So here's a document I have, a note I have in Obsidian where I have my Gantt chart and I have uh, this, this dynamic table that scans and pulls out data from a, a directory of files and displays it in a table. So that's a different tool that I use um, for Jerry, things. So yes. in, in uh, answer to some previous questions that were asked, was, why couldn't I just do this with other tools? I think I, I really like what you're doing because it says that sometimes what we consider to be writing tools are actually the tools that you use in day-to-day -day project participation and management and then at the mm -hmm. and then at some point you may have to take that very same thing and put it in a report and you can reuse it very easily um, yeah. and, and that's what kills me all the time is i'm always redoing stuff or having to yeah. shoehorn it if it wasn't part of the writing system to begin with i'll take screenshots to yeah. be able to include something in a, in a report well that's great, except if you ever want to change that, good luck, you know. And 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 I I can yeah. see the, the the utility of going deeper into using the tools that you are using in day to day life as a sort of you know they have a record and they and you can include them in the final report if you will. And that's that's that was the example I had pulled together. I did I did I developed this actually for my current client. I just did a recent research project where I was doing analysis of a team and its productivity and efficiency. And I I set up a system like this where I have like I have like 12 interviews with people. I capture a lot of you know what they said in the interview. And well, what I do is like I have a structure like this. This is my directory structure. Where I have the interviews in one directory and they all follow the same template, which I can use and set up in, in Obsidian easily enough. And then what, what I do is, is um, I'm going to like, let's see. So this table down below, this table down below, it's created dynamically. So this is my overview. Like how am I doing on my interviews? It pulls out from each of those files you know, this case, Jerry Evernote, Jerry Obsidian, Sam I am and Buck Builder Bob, those are different files under the interviews. And it pulls out different fields, different data fields from those files and puts it into this table. And I tell it what I tell it what table, what information I want with this little bit of it's not even SQL. It's a little bit of like, you know, I want a table, I want the occupation and interview date. And give it a nice name than that from this directory and this tag and sort by interview date 
And that's what it does. And every time that that field in my file changes, you can see the occupation over on the left at interview date. I just go in and I type in anything I want there. And anytime that changes, this table in this other document gets updated automatically. And I can click through to that file if I want to. Now, that's, that's interesting, that's nice. But what I found it really useful for is, did I get rid of that? Oh, you know what? Sorry, I didn't think it, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. I think I hit that field. Oh, I did it, sorry. So one thing I used it for really a lot is as I went through my interview notes, I would type right into the file. I'd say, this is an observation, blah. This is another observation, blah. Oh, this is a recommendation, blah. And I put those in the, in the, in the context of the interview at the point of where I captured what somebody was telling me, I synthesized what they were saying into an observation or a recommendation and also would identify follow-up questions there. And you see here, this is where, what it looks like over here. I just say observation colon colon, and I put in my, what I wanted. And then I pulled them all together from everybody into this one list. And I could see them all together and how it all relates. And follow-up questions, I could put that in there and I could jump right to it and say, oh, I need to follow a question with this guy about this as I went through it. And so I was able to use this to really pull it into an analysis of recommendations and categorization and, and just follow the whole process, but referencing the core set of interview documents that I, that I had in place. So Jerry, if you Jerry. have 30 or 40 items in, in a project, mm -hmm. how was the screen presentation for that kind of thing where you're really having a lot of different items? I'm thinking of what specifically kind of, of chapters in the textbook where you can have 30, 35 chapters and each one's a project mm -hmm. unto itself. After yeah, this, uh, Ted has his hands up. Go ahead, yeah. Jerry. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, I would org. It depends on your organization. So, I'd have it in a separate file. So each ch chapter would be in a separate file, right? And you can link. It depends on what, how you want to set up. I, I, I'm thinking off the top of my head here. It's like you'd have them in separate files, just like I have here. This example. All these things are in separate files in a directory structure, right? So I have my note survey interviews that has, you know, the, the interview list and the observations, the project overview file, and they all reference each other. I can cross link to each other. I can pull contents from one file into another as a, as a blurb that I can see. So again, if it changes in that other file, it updates automatically in this file. Um, I don't have a, a slide for that, but it, there's a lot more, this is where it gets, there's a lot more sharing and cross-referencing and linking together information across these files within the context of a book or chapters or whatever that, that you can do much more easily with Obsidian than say Word or something. There are people out there, some of the examples I've seen out there, which I didn't need to dig into are, I'm writing a book or I'm writing, I'm writing two blog entries, or two blog articles, uh, an email, a newsletter and chapters in my new book and ideas I'm developing for another book I may want to have. How do I organize all this stuff with Obsidian? And they have many people out there have their own systems they're willing to share and you know describe. And you can ask them on Discord, ask them dynamic, you know, hey, how did you do this? How did you deal with this problem? And they'll tell you. You can copy the template down, use it yourself, try it, change it. They tell you what plugins to use. I mean, there's a lot of help out there for like like you know to help like this especially your case writing a book or whatever they they talk about how to how to do that it, it's, jerry, it looks like people there's, asking there's, questions it, uh we have ted and then we have yeah. uh dick Can jerry you... it, it looks like there's a lot of uh, formal framework overhead that you have to put in place before you can use some of these things that's why not at all yeah i'd say not at all because i dove in kind of like, you know, what is all this stuff? And then I, as I, as I got to know more of the features and I explored more plugins, I got more ideas about how to set this up. This, this example here, I had no clue I could even do that like up until like four weeks ago, right? Three and a half, four weeks ago. And then I, and I, I had to, I had to resolve questions. Like, how do I do this? Can I do this? Can I do the data this way? And I would Google it. I'd ask on Discord. I'd get help from people. I, I would say that this is just, you just set up some directories. And if you need to refactor 
if you need to re change and redo things, the tools here, Obsidian makes it very easy to do that. Like, well, oh, like I want to- for, for instance, just an example that uh, was being discussed uh, mm -hmm. by, uh, uh, I'm sorry, who, who, was, who was it who was saying it? It was uh, Harry, right? Uh, about a book. Uh, uh, so I'm writing a book chapter and mm -hmm. uh, I've got a bunch of stuff associated with the book chapter. Mm -hmm. And then the senior editor of the book asked me to write a forward for the whole damn thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a separate entity completely because it takes my chapter plus I don't know twenty three other chapters or something like that, mm -hmm. and and it you know has to sort of summarize the other twenty three chapters in a sort of a you know like a like a promo kind of thing you put on the back back jacket of a book or something like that right. but he wants it as a as a forward you know explaining the whole thing to to people who are just learning about this particular field so if i've already been building everything around my book chapter and how do i now not disrupt it while i go and say now i've got to do this this um introductory thing right so that i mean i i would say that's i mean I think it'd be pretty easy. So I can jump to an example. I could try that out. I don't think we have enough time for that. I mean, I could show you how easy it is to, um, sorry. Um, can everyone see that? No, not yet. Can I jump in so, a second here while you're looking, uh, yes. Jerry? Um, Ted, uh, if you're using OneNote, you would have each of your chapters say as a separate uh, page in a folder. And if you wanted to add another page, which is a uh, preface, you could create a page with that name and move it up to be in the appropriate spot. Or if you want dusk jacket, uh, you would uh, take a page for that and put it in the appropriate spot. So when you look at all the chapters in your book, they'd be in order with a preface in the right spot and the uh, dust jacket in the other. I can't speak to Obsidian. I'm assuming it can do the type of thing, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, here's, here's here's what I would do if I had to add. Somebody asked me to add a forward to my 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 famous note taking survey. So I'd start with. Can I hide this damn bar? No. How do I dock to top? No. Ever know? I mean, Zoom is like uh, blocking everything. So um, sorry. So I would add it in my to do. And let's say I wanted to work on it now. So I just drag it over to in progress and now it's in progress. I can put a date in here too. You know, I can say it's, I need to have this due by the 14th there. Now it's a due date that's associated with this task. Um, so I can move that out of the side and focus on here. So I'm gonna bring up my hierarchy again. Here's my note survey. So I'm gonna add a new note. And I'm going to tag it with my, so that when I search for project note survey, all my files show up. And I'll just say forward, right? You know, idea. Uh, talk about notes in general, blah, blah. And then I can say, you know, draft. And I can say final version, right? So I can use the draft. And I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to pull in the project roles. So for me, I'm going to use this project overview. I'm going to link to the project overview and I'm just going to bring in the project goals there just so that I have a reference to them, right? So now what I've just done here is that this is pulled in this text. So if I change this, this, you see, it got reflected over here in this document. So anytime the project goals get changed, I can they get updated everywhere. Now I may not end up with that in the final version. I may end up with like, you know, the final version is just like capture feedback. I may change it to massage it to make it fit better. But in my draft, I may want to pull that in here so I have it right in front of me without having to go look for it. Uh, you can also pull in the timeline if you want it. And, and all this stuff is stored locally. Yes. So, so, so see my timeline. Airplane mode, you, mm -hmm. you can you can still edit on this stuff. Yeah, this is all local. 
So this is, I can pull in the, the Gantt chart that I, I have, or I can say, I don't want to pull it in. I'll just have a link to it. So I just created a link to the, the timeline, which I can, I can get a preview of if I hover over that link, I can see what it looks like, or I can click on it and it takes me right there. And you can see here the, you know, the, te the, the text of the, if I needed to change anything, this is the one thing, it's not a, that kind of project management tool like Microsoft Project. It won't automatically create the Gantt chart. You have to do it. But if you, if you, you know, once you've done it, it, it reflects it immediately. And um, I can also go back to the previous document. So this, this also, I want to, this one feature, this one plugin. So if you'll see this, this sliding window UI, this is a feature that somebody wrote in a plugin. So they can, they can see conclusions. I don't have anything like that, but you see, you can just like, I found this recently and it's like really amazing. I can just scan, you know, like go quickly between the different files. Yeah, so this, this is all on my hard drive. Um, let's see, I can, from here, I can say, where is it? It's down here, move this all the way. Show in System Explorer. I don't think you can see this, but it opened up a uh, finder window and showed it in my directory structure. Well, that means that you could store it on your machine or on your own personal cloud. Yeah, this is this is on my machine. And my this is just one vault I created for this talk just to demonstrate this example. I have a vault that's all my personal stuff that I sync to Git. I have a GitHub account and I sync to Git. And I block some things like I used it for organizing my taxes. As I pulled in PDFs and files that I needed to upload as part of the, the tax return, I, I put those in to a directory as well, but I put a Git flag in there saying, don't load these into my GitHub because I don't want this kind of information in Git, but it's stored locally and I was able to reference it as, as such. Uh, Can we take uh, Dick's question next? Yeah, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I have a, just a real quick, probably a minor question in a sense. I'm trying to build a PowerPoint presentation and I find <laughs> it's kind of clunky to try to get various uh, sources into it. I'm wondering if it's better for me to make things in one of your notes, say Obsidian, uh, and put everything there because it sounds like it's a lot easier to pull things from different sources into, say, Obsidian. And then can I import right. Obsidian or export uh, Obsidian into PowerPoint easily? Um, let's say not easily, but it is easier to pull together, um, your thoughts in obsidian and then structure it. You can, so, so I did this for the crypto talk. They do have a plugin that you can do slides directly from obsidian. It's not great. I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> um, but what I did was I. I started writing my narrative, like what were the main points I wanted to cover? And then I kept massaging that into what slides, how did I want to organize my thoughts? And I captured the data and the information and the structure in Obsidian. Then the layout, the graphicals, the graph, the images I used, the formatting, the three box, if you remember that talk, I, I, I came up with that within, I use Google Slides. I came up with that in, in Google Slides. And then I just, copied the data and the information over and I may tweaked it in, you know, as I started talking it aloud, I said, that doesn't sound so well spoken aloud. I tweak it and then I tried to make sure it was kept in sync, but it, there was that, I had to do copy and paste at some point, but the organization was so much easier in Obsidian than doing it all in Google Slides for sure. Especially as you go through and you're like, oh, I want to rearrange things. I want to restructure it. I restructured right. that talk like three or four times before I ended up with what I showed you guys. So yeah, yeah. it sounds good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask, yeah. do you have anything uh, more uh, to go over, Jerry? No, that's that's basically it. Okay. Oh, just um, one one yeah. uh, one more thing. I wanted to. Uh, where is it? I just want to show have, uh, Harry who has some things and Drew might have a comment. Oh, one more comp one thing. You can do graphing in here very easily. So mm -hmm. this is actually this is actually an example where it's pulling data from my interviews 
see here for each interview, it's pulling data out of there and graphing it, uh, comparing them to each other. So I have in my interviews, a field called pleasure and, you know, um, let's see. Yeah, pleasure and pain, you see here. Uh, pain is two, but if I change that, it'll get reflected in the, uh, in my graph. So last, last bit of showing off, sorry. But so um, from, what I can, from what I can see, it's available online. It doesn't cost anything unless you want to pay something. It's available as an application on your Mac machine. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's basically, it's wrapped as an Electron app, which means it's using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS as the implementation of Obsidian. And it can run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And you pay, you can pay to have it sync for you across devices or to have built-in publish capability if you want to do publish to a website you pay for those but if you don't want to pay for those you don't have to so if you have your own uh, cloud storage uh be it dropbox or icloud or something you could store your files up there and then access them from any machines um yes it's not so icloud i use icloud so i that's how i get access to these files on my mac on my iphone is okay. I the same vault directory I use that is pushed to Git is also a iCloud shared directory that Apple takes care of. So it's just the same directory on my machine that's being shared to both sources. Okay, Drew, do you have anything uh, short to add here? Thank you very much, Jerry. Do you have Welcome. anything short to add here? Because I'd like to give Harry a chance to talk. You're muted. Uh, give me. You're still muted, sir. All right, can anyone hear now? Yes. Okay. Um, what I do with, um, I use, I've gone through most of the products um, that are available. Um, I've settled on Evernote um, because it has the strengths that I prefer, which is capturing data from the internet, um, searching across multiple devices, um, I do a lot of um, computer consulting and research, and I find that bookmarking uh, text in, in things inside web browsers can become tedious over time, uh, especially if you use a couple of different browsers. Um, and over time, you switch computers and you wonder where those bookmarks went. Um, where did the website go? Um, I, I use the web capturing tool um, a lot to preserve information that I see on the internet. And then that information becomes immediately indexed and searchable inside um, the product, um, which is, I think, very nice. Um, another thing that I use it for is for storing uh, software and, uh, and files. Um, software programs, I did my research on Windows 11 and Android software, and I downloaded utilities and, and hacking soft stuff to get into Windows and put all that and organize that. And you can actually upload files, um, software files, uh, PDF documents. Um, I keep all of my documents in there and it automatically searches, indexes inside your Word documents, your PDF files. And if you wanna know um, how much money you paid for something and you don't know where the receipt is, um, I keep all of my receipts in there and you can um, search for you know, Costco and, or milk or wherever and find that receipt that you wanna retrieve. Um, and I use it for putting together present presentations that I give to certain organizations. Um, and it's basically just information retrieval. You know, getting the information back is what one of the things that I value the most is, is after a period of time, you know, what website did I go to to find this? Well, I can type in a search index um, and uh, if you pay for it, it costs extra, which I don't do is you can do Boolean searches. Um, it's one level price up from what I have. Um, I do pay for a subscription to the product. Um, it gives me some additional features like multiple, um, being able to use it across all my devices. 
uh, instead of just limiting limited to two. Um, and um, that's pretty much what I have to add to that. You know, is is okay. capturing, retrieving, syncing, syncing data, um, and storing files, software, um, presentation materials, things like that. Thank you.